Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplant Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me and around me. I will talk about tropical houseplants generally. So today, and I've got the plant next to me, you might be able to see it slightly in screen here. I want to talk a bit more about the philodendron I always get this confused and I always want to say Thai Sunrise, but no, it's the Malay Gold, if I'm not mistaken. And I'll bring it up so you can see the actual plant itself. And you might be able to see there, it has grown substantially since I got it because it was probably only about this tall and it only had about three or four leaves. There are two growth points in the same pot and you can see why it gets its name. So it's got very neon type leaves. Let me just pop it down so we can talk. And yeah, it's got very neon leaves. As with most philodendron, this is one that generally likes to climb up and I'll bring it a bit closer so you might be able to see, I have got it attached to my <laughs> usual janky support stick. I swear I will probably have to do t-shirts that say janky support stick team. Um, but, and actually in all fairness, looking at it now, it is a bit wobbly. So I will probably need to supplement with more janky support sticks. But let me pop that down. You can see obviously why it gets its name. So the Malay gold is because it's got very neon green leaves, slightly yellow when they come out. So that's obviously where the name probably originated from. I would assume based on the name that this is a man-made variant of the plant and I don't know what the original parent plant might be. I'll do a bit of research when I'm editing this and see if I can find what the parent's plant name is and if I do find it I will put it up here. But it's a very very cool plant. It did take a while to get growing and but when it did and by while I mean probably a couple of months for it to really start going but when it did and as soon as I gave it a stick to climb up and again I will always come back to the same point is if for most of these trailing plants or the more upright philodendrons give them something to support them to go up and they will get larger quicker and more foliage and larger foliage as well most of the times but after I gave it the support stick it kind of boomed. It went really, really quickly. And at some point now soon, I do need to take a cutting of this and propagate it, if for no other reason, because I want to chop the plant down a bit. And again, we've talked about apical dominance and releasing the apical dominance. And this is the plant geek moment here. Apical dominance, I'll just quickly say what it is, is when you cut the main growing stem, it releases the energy into some of the side buds that already exist within the nodes of the plant in order for it to branch out. So you'll get a bushier plant that way as well because it, most of the time it will branch out and create two branches rather than just the one stem or two stems essentially instead of just the one growing stem. Not always, but then on the flip side of that, sometimes I've seen some philodendron when you do this that you end up getting three or four new growth points. It just depends on the energy that the plant has and its genetics as well as to how it will push out. I know some people have experimented when they've done this and found those growth buds and those growth points near the nodes and actually experimented with cakey paste. And that is a paste that you can find online. And it's a paste that a lot of people use when it comes to growing um, and propagating orchids. But what it does do, it helps stimulate growth from those little nubs of growth points, essentially, rather than roots. This isn't, uh, so you know how you'd get root growth hormone, you put it on the roots when you're wanting to propagate something. This is actually just to activate growth points within the plant for new stems and new foliage as well. I haven't tried it yet and it's annoying because I bought cakey paste almost a year ago and I'm pretty sure it's expired by now so I need to get some new cakey paste. But it's something that I wanted to test out uh, because a lot of people have had some success with this. So I will probably experiment with that this winter and as soon as I've got some decent results, I will let you know on here. But coming back to this, I don't know whether or not you notice and I'll pick it up again so you can see 
and I'll try, you can always see me looking up because I've got a ceiling fan and I'm trying to not behead a plant, but this is in a net pot and this is in my Aroid soil mix. And this is one of my philodendrons that's still in my Aroid soil mix. Some of you that have been around for a while have seen now that I'm starting to transition most of my plants into Lechuza Pond and I've had good success with that. This might be one that's still going to get, that still needs to get transitioned into it. Some of the huge philodendrons that I have, and I'm lo currently looking at my philodendron Burley Marks variegated, which is almost the size of the small tree, probably will stay in the soil and will get repotted soon because that is probably a bit pot bound at the moment. On the flip side of that, I don't know if I want to up-pot it just yet because if I give it a bigger pot, it will grow even bigger still. <laughs> and I really truly do need to bring that down slightly. So one of the, so that is going to be one of the things that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put it into choose upon at some point soon. I am a bit more hesitant now that we're going into the colder months to transition plants into a different growing media. I might just hold off a bit until it starts warming up again in spring before I do that. And generally that is a good idea to do with most of your plants. But in terms of care, I've tried this in different lighting conditions and I thought this because it's a slightly more lime colored philodendron and I've seen this with, for instance, my philodendron erubescence or no, my philodendron scandens, the heartleaf philodendron, the neon version and also the pothos, the neon version. Both of those don't tend to like really, really bright or even bright in direct light. They tend to prefer and grow a bit better, granted a bit slower in the medium light condition. Medium to bright indirect, that kind of region there. This is one that I tested it in that region and it did okay, the leaves were a bit smaller, it did have some good growth, but the moment that I moved it towards bright indirect is the moment that it did really, really well. So take from that what you will, but with bright indirect I found bigger growth, faster growth, all of the above essentially. And as with most things, when you give plants like this more light, you won't, I mean, this is difficult because this isn't a variegated plant. You won't get a plant that has more variegation if you're talking about a variegated plant, but you will get a plant when it's like this that it will keep that bright neon leaf for a bit longer because it's getting a lot of light before it starts darkening down into the slightly older leaves and again I'll pick it up and you can see the difference hopefully that's coming in it's a bit more of an ombre effect so you can see the top leaves are really really quite bright and the more you look towards the base the more they tend to go towards a relatively bright green but not quite that neon color. Um, in terms of watering with this one I would say I water it once every two uh, I'm trying to think now because with the winter and the summer months this is getting watered about every seven to eight days in the winter and maybe every five to six days in the summer it needs a bit more water because it dries out a lot more in the summer months in the conservatory where I'm in. In terms of humidity I wouldn't be able to tell you 100% with this one because I think I've always just by chance had it in my conservatory based on the morphology of the plant, based on what it looks like, I don't think it probably needs it. I think this could probably be out in regular household humidity and that would be fine. Just be cognizant of the watering schedule that you have. You don't let it dry out too much. All of these good things and obviously light, make sure that it does get some bright and direct light. Fertilizing, I think again, as with most things, I sound like a bit of a broken record, but winter or summer, as long as I'm still seeing active growth happening, I will fertilize every second to third watering for most of my plants. Maybe in the winter, if I'm seeing that the growth rate is slowing down, I might make the fertilizer amount a bit lower. So basically just make a slightly weaker fertilize. Uh, I'll make a slightly weaker fertilized solution just because I don't want to overload the plant with too much fertilizer. But yeah, the last thing I maybe want to touch on a bit is pests. I've not had, touch wood, any pests on this yet. So I wouldn't know what pests this specific one would get. But based on it's the fact that it's a philodendron, there is a chance that it might get spider mites. There is a chance that it might get mealybugs. There is a chance that it might get thrips. <laughs> I've not had any of that with this plant yet. And actually thinking of it, I don't 
think I've actually had pests on any of my neon plants. So I don't know if there's any correlation there with that, but that is a thing. I've only just realized that now. But yeah, most of my neon plants, all of my neon plants, have never had pests on them. So I don't know if that makes any difference to the pests, essentially. But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about this. Relatively easy plant. Definitely one that if you can get it, do try it out. As I said in the very beginning, I keep getting it confused naming-wise with the Thai Sunrise. And when I first made that mistake on a video, I had to kind of quickly put down the real name on the video because when I did a quick search, I'm just like, what? If this isn't a Thai Sunrise, what is a Thai Sunrise? That's a much more expensive philodendron and a much rarer philodendron. The Malay Gold is one that you should be able to find a bit more readily available. At least that's been my experience in the UK and I would imagine in Europe as well. But yeah, just to wrap it all up, as always, if you've got any questions, comments, do drop them down below. I'd love to have that conversation with you. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.